Hello everybody, we're going to take a look at 3D framing plans, specifically rafters in this video. And I made a parametric rafter that I want to show off first. I'm going to go and isolate that right now, isolate element. And here's our ridge board, here's our common rafter tying into it. We can go and set our horizontal run to whatever we want that to be. So here you can see it's 3 foot 10. In a plan view, I can go and just use grip edits to go and modify that length to whatever I see fit. Then also another nice feature is we can add an overhang to it. So I can say a one foot overhang on this goes and pops out. Notice that the bird mouth cut is already integrated into the model. If I want to exclude the bird mouth cut, I can go down to my checkbox here, C cut, apply. So we can get rid of that bird mouth. We can also change the length of the C cut. So here I can say, let's say it's sitting on top of two by six framing. So I can say like 5.5 inches and say apply, and it's going to adjust that seat cut length. If you're concerned about heel cut, which is this vertical plumb cut right here, or height above plate, I do report those out as a reporting parameter in this. So here under dimensions, you get the height of the heel cut, the height above plate measurement as well. So if code says you need a certain amount of height above plate, you can make sure that you have enough meat left on the rafter for that. The other options that I want you to see is that we can do a plumb cut rafter tail. By default, that's on. That'll be a nice straight cut right here on the rafter tail. But sometimes uh, people might want that to be a uh, square cut. So we're going to go and say apply. So there's our square end of the rafter tail. And then we can also add an adjustment for the ridge board. So here I have just a two by eight as the ridge board, this being a two by six dying into it. So half of the ridge board's thickness is three quarters of an inch on either side. Here, if it was zero, say apply, and now there's no adjustment for it. That's the main parametrics that are in here. We also have our material, obviously, but then we can also change the pitch. So I've preloaded in a bunch of different pitches. The family file comes in all the two by eight varieties, but if you want to go and let's say modify to a two by six, so let's go and do that real quick. So here's a two by six, six twelve pitch. Let's go to a two by eight. 8 to 12 pitch. If I want to go and modify this to be a different dimensional lumber, all I have to do is go to edit type. We're going to duplicate and then we're going to rename it as we duplicate it 2 by 6 to 12 pitch. Okay. Here the board depth, we can go and change that. So another parametric in the family, 5.5 inches or 5.5 and inches. And here the board thickness, 1.5 still for a 2 by 6. We can just say apply and okay. And now we have a 2 by 6 at a 212 pitch. I can go and change that back to my 612 pitch that I had before. And I'm also going to go and modify this to be back to no overhang. And I'm going to change it to have a plum cut. There we go. All right, so let's go back and reset our view. And now from here, I'm going to go in a plan view. I'm just going to go and copy and paste this over, or I could do the array command. The first board over. On framing plans, if I want it to be on center, 16 inches, I have to go 15.25 inches over. And then now from there, I can go every 16 inches, quarter inch. So I think we would be fine if we just block these two together. And we'll just mirror that over. So now we're ready to take a little bit of a closer look on how I made the parametric rafter family. All right, so to truly understand this rafter, we do need to understand the extrusion that's behind it. I'm going to click on it, and to understand it, we actually have to hide it. All right, so what you're seeing here are things that you can do under Create, Reference Line, and Reference Plane. So the template, once again, gave us this vertical line here and this reference plane here. What I did is I made a reference plane to represent the long side of the rafter to tell us its length, and we can add a dimension on that. When you go in Dimension, it's under Annotate, Aligned. You can click between the two items, click your dimension down, and then to pick the dimension, you can give it a label, which is basically giving it a parameter. If you don't have the parameter that you want there, you can just go and click Create Parameter. And we'll go through all these details a little bit later in the video. You can do the same thing for angles. So what I have here is a line as well. So once again, that's Create Reference Line. And that reference line then is dimensioned 
under annotate with an angular dimension from that vertical line that the template gave us to the actual line here. Well, it's actually just giving us the, the pitch, which is the complementary angle to that is actually the real dimension or angle for the plum cut. But a lot of times uh, tools are used to make a plum cut based on the pitch. Anyways, this is getting to carpentry. We're going to backtrack from that a little bit. So I call it slope angle, and that is the angle that we need to get the pitch. So I went ahead and converted all that into degrees. So if we have a 612 pitch, you know, this might be the slope for that. We'll click on this. And here you can see that the extrusion start is going to be at zero. The extrusion end is a little button here to associate a parameter. So I can click on that. So I had made a parameter called board thickness. This. Then I went and made some void cuts with visibility parameters. Modify, clicking on the family types and making new parameters this way. Here you can go and make a family parameter. You can say it's an instance. You can say it's going to have a yes, no. So hold on a second. Yes, no. Basically, you can associate a true or false statement and you can make different geometries occur based on yes, no parameters. So that's how I do the ridge board adjustment plum cut, how to do the plum cut for the tail and how to do the heel and bird uh, heel and seat cut for the bird mouth here. All right, let's get into making a generic structural base like stud. And then we'll uh, cover a little bit more about like the, the basics and how to do something like this. If you want this file, I have it for you on my website, studiohero.co. Feel free to navigate over there and pick it up if you'd like it. We're going to say new family, generic model.rft. That's what I need. I'm going to say open. And it should look very familiar. I mean, here's my floor plan. So this is a top view. I'm actually going to do this from a front view. Here's our front view, and then I'm going to go and change this to just be a little bit bigger. Set a reference plane, mark that through. This reference plane here, top of stud, create once again. And here we can do reference line, and let's just go and drop down a reference line. For this reference line, let's go and set this to be about the, the typical width of a, a stud, stud's thickness. So a two by four would be an inch and a half. Now let's go and make a parameter for this aligned dimension that and dimension this and click on them and say new parameter here let's go and name this parameter to be the thickness of the stud it's going to be a type parameter in this case and you could do an instance if you wanted as well i'm just going to make it a type um, the dimensions a category is fine once again that just organizes where it lands in the properties of the item say okay so that's our thickness right now we just have thickness here as a, an option and default elevation so i'm going to make another parameter we're going to call this one stud height or just height or we call it length whatever you want to give it and then for the height i'm going to make it an instance most likely i'll have a bunch of them at different heights so i might want to just be changing that if you make it an instance parameter and it's locked to a plane, what's also nice is you can use the align command and we'll just say it's a dimension. Okay. So now we have our height and we have our thickness. Now this is kind of an odd default height. So if we go and click in on this, let's just say it's 92 and five eighths of an inch. That's your typical stud height for an eight foot ceiling. So I'm going to go and make that my default there. If I want to make sure that this is all working, I can say, you know, what if that was four inches? Boom, it adjusts. And what if that was 1.5 inches again? It adjusts. What if I drag this? Does it adjust? Yes, it does. Control Z to undo. So everything's working, right? So we did a stick frame of what we wanted and we just kind of messed around with it to make sure everything's going well. Go and do an extrusion. So we can go to create extrusion, create extrusion. We can do pick lines. And I can say anywhere I pick is going to lock automatically. So here it's, it's already locked. Just saves me some clicking here, here, and down here. Then TR to trim. Let's go and trim that up. Click on the size of the line that you want to keep. For the extrusion start, zero is fine. That's going to just be like a base. And then the end and need to make a parameter for that. So if we click on that, 
we can see that we don't have anything that's going to tell us like the width of the stud or the right so we have length we have thickness and then the other would be width which technically makes up the thickness of the wall in most cases regardless new parameter and here i'm going to make it a type as well so like two by four two by six all of those nominal sizes based on the cross section I'm going to be uh, making that a type parameter and then the length I just have as the instance. So right now in 3D, this is gonna look a little weird, right? Because the width is at one foot. So I need to update that default for this. So once again, let's test that parameter. We go and click on it, the width default. If this is a two by four, that needs to be a 3.5 actual width. Say apply and okay, so now I have it. With that, we can also click on it in the material. We can say it's got a, uh, a typical material of like a soft wood lumber, southern pine, timber, wood, we can just give it whatever. Now, once you get everything dialed in and you're happy with it, let's go and make a couple other common types of this, family types for different types of nominal cross-sectional lumber. So I'm gonna go into family types here, say new type, and here we'll call this one two by six. We'll change the default width to five and a half for a two by six. All right, so we have three different kinds. Let's go and make sure that the one that we like the most or that we think we're going to use the most is loaded up. Let's go and change the category of this. Right now it's a generic model. Now let's go and say it's a structural uh, framing. Structural framing. Say OK. And then we can say load into project and close. So here I have it. My tiny house on wheels. Say OK. Now I can go and place that. All right, so let's go and take this one step further. Click into that stud again. Since it's a structural family type, structural framing, we have some more properties we can add to it if we wanted to. So the sectional area, we can say that is going to equal the thickness times the width. Right? Capitals matter. That's our sectional area. I'm not gonna fill this all out. That would be kind of boring. Say apply. So now we have those that piece of data in the model itself. You can also add more parameters. You can add parameter like cost. I'm going to load it back into the project, override the existing version. There's our stud. Now let's make it so we can have a void cut through the stud so that way it can carry through from here all the way up to here without needing to make these two separate studs. So for example, it's kind of a void cut that'll take up the thickness of the plate, the windows rough opening, and the header assembly. And then that way we can have a gap in the stud and just keep our stud placement nice and neat. In a front view, let's go and add a couple more reference planes. Let's go to create reference plane, and here we'll just call this one bottom of sill, top of header cut. So if we go to create here, we're gonna do a void form, void extrusion, do pick lines from here to here, and then we'll also do it based on the width. All that's locked up, TR to trim, extrusion end to be the same as the thickness, no, the width. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. We need to make it cut geometry only if, there's a yes, no on this, void cut and that'll be an instance and we'll put it under construction that'll relate to if we have a window or a door coming through there actually really just a window we'll say okay now we could make multiple ones of these you know if we thought we had extra long studs and we need maybe a couple windows going through the stud itself we can go and make multiple void cuts just like this at different heights and then you can go and mess around with it we're just going to say okay And I also want to make the void cut off by default. Load into project, override the existing version and its parameter. Let's isolate this stud real quick. So now if we have this stud and we find that, okay, there's going to be a window opening, I can say, let's do the void cut, apply. Now when we go and place it in, we can work around that window easily. Now let's take a look. So volume, 0.18 cubic feet. It accounts for the volume if we have the cut or not, which is kind of cool. So in terms of weights and all that other good stuff, we could do a you know, weight parameter, multiply the volume by a certain rate for the certain cross-sectional area, 
and then we can go in and really have a good accurate calculation here. Okay, that's it. I hope you liked the video. Check out studiohero.co for more, and I'll see you next time.